guys welcome back to a brand new video this video is gonna be fire and we're gonna be doing it in ASMR sorry about the cringe intro but welcome to a brand new video and in this video what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be reacting to cold emails a few days back I made a post my free private mentorship community the client closers I made a post asking people to send me over their cold emails uh, because I'm gonna be reacting to it. What I didn't tell them is I was actually gonna record a YouTube video reacting to them. Actually, that's a complete lie. I did tell them that it was gonna be a YouTube video. Uh, obviously, for confidential reasons, I'm gonna blur out their names. I got a lot of answers and I only picked two. So if yours didn't make the cut, don't worry too much about it because if you guys like this video, I'm gonna be making a ton more uh, later down the line. But so without further ado, I'm gonna hop on my computer and uh, let's get right into it. So the first message goes, hey Jeff, I'm a huge fan of the concept behind non-motorized treadmills as they're safe and less expensive. Now, I'm going to break, break it down pretty much in uh, in uh, paragraphs. So what I like about that intro is that it's quite personalized. So he's calling the business owner by his name, right? Uh, you might think that, you know, that that's that's just normal, but a lot of people completely neglect it, right? Uh, you need to address people by their name. There's a lot of power in calling someone's name. It is unique to us. It makes us who we are, part of our identity. And so we feel kind of special when someone acknowledges our name, right? And so the worst thing, the, the worst thing that you can do is not even change the name. Like at, at least change the name if you're not going to personalize the rest of the message. So here I really like that he has been very specific and uh, and he's talking about the actual product. So it's pretty clear from the get-go to the business owner that he's not sending out this message to thousands of different people, right? He might be sending the message out to a few treadmill uh, brands. I'm, I'm sure he's capitalizing on the fact that we're, we're stuck at home. So I really like the fact that he has tapped into uh, niches that have a lot of potential right now. And it's actually something that I recommend you guys do. If you are in the e-com niche, I, I personally recommend that you pivot into the industries that are really killing it right now. I'm talking health, wellness, fitness, etc., etc. And so he's clearly doing that. And so uh, I really like that, that he's doing that. Now, then he goes on to say, my name is whatever his name is. I've been meaning to contact you for the longest, finally got the time to do so. I actually quite like that. Basically what he's saying here is, look, I'm, I'm actually a really busy person, right? And so he's telling the business owner that he's not just this, this person that all, all he does is send out messages to uh, business owners all day, right? All, all day long. What he's really doing here is he's building up his authority by telling the business owner, look, we're both busy people, right? And it built up his, his authority in the eyes of the business owner. So I really like that he's doing that. Now, then he goes on to say, the reason why I asked uh, to speak to you is because after a quick audit of your current marketing at whatever the, uh, the brand name is, I noticed you're only running one ad on Facebook and the landing page of it is your website homepage, which is confusing to your potential, there's a little mistake there, uh, potential customers and might deter them from purchasing. Um, so again, this is very personalized, right? I like the fact that he's gone on the ad library and he's actually checked how many ads they are running. What I would say on that paragraph is you wanna make the lines shorter and you wanna make them punchier as well. And so the, the other thing that I would say is, I mean, and, and here's here's where the tone really plays a big role. But I would actually, instead of instead of doing a, a so much personalization to this client and looking so much into this client, what I would do is I would literally have that time, right? So I would still personalize it to that client, but I would take, I would uh, put that the, the rest of the half uh, into actually taking a look at the competitors, right? What are the competitors doing? Because psychologically, it is much more powerful to let him know what others are doing than to actually let him know that he's not doing a very poor job. And that is just a simple case of FOMO. And for example, we see this in real life, right? If your close circle of friends are broke, and even like the, the town that you live in, they're all broke, et cetera, et cetera, then you won't be really motivated to level up because you haven't seen what's possible, right? You haven't seen what other people are doing and you haven't really opened your eyes. You haven't really woken up to the fact that like, there's so much potential out there. So that is what I would tell you guys to do, right? Not just focus on what the client is doing, right? And what they could be doing better, but also show them what other people are doing because that's gonna give him or her a sense of loss, a sense of this person is doing so much better than me. They're in the exact same space. They might even have a worse product. Why am I not doing this? And not only that, but it also serves for you to actually build up your authority because they can clearly see that, okay, this person actually knows about my industry. They speak my language, right? And so they're, they're going to be much more likely to jump on a call with you because you're telling them that you understand about their niche, right? You understand about their space more than the actual, I really like your product. For a customer, that's really good, right? They, they want customers to like the product, but for a service provider, for an agency owner, they're more interested in, do you know how to make me grow in my space? That is what they truly care about. Not so much if you enjoy their product or not, right? It's still, it's still a good idea though, uh, don't get me wrong. So uh, then he goes on to say, I'm sure I can help you fix that. I would love to hop on a call, on a quick 20 minute call and troubleshoot these problems for you and reduce some of the stress you're currently facing. Now, there, there's a few uh, good things uh, in there. Uh, I like the fact that you're putting a timestamp on the, the, the call. I would actually double down and make the call more of a no brainer, right? I really just convey the value of this call. I make him realize that like, look, if nothing comes of it, right? They can just walk away and implement all the stuff that you've given them, right? And so that is what I will tell you on that. Uh, and the other thing that I would tell you not to do 
is don't put words into their mouth, right? I would personally not say I want to reduce some of the stress that you're currently facing because I don't know if they're if they're actually stressed out. Now, it's it's not a massive mistake, but for me, it just comes off as, as a bit as a bit salesy. It comes off as a bit kind of robotic, not very empathetic because you don't know that they're currently stressed out. So I would just focus on painting a clear picture that they could be doing so much better. Um, I would also focus on the value of the call and double down on that, right? When you do the follow-up, if you do. And I would personally stay away from guessing what their emotional um, situation is currently, right? Unless they've, you know, actually stated it on like an Instagram post uh, that you've seen that they're currently stressed out or whatever it is, right? So then the, the final thing uh, he goes on to say is, let me know what time works for you this week or conversely, just pick a time for my scheduler. Uh, honestly, just very well done there. Um, yeah, I like the fact that you're driving him to a scheduler. You're not asking, you know, what time works for you and then going back and forth um, and just wasting a bunch of time. And then finally he says, does this week work for you? In my opinion, that's not the best question to end the conversation with us because that's a yes or no question okay uh, and so one of the things that you want to make sure that you don't do on in a sales scenario is you don't want to ask yes or no question because if he actually goes on to answer the question uh and he just says no this week doesn't work for me then it doesn't really leave you much, much room to pivot right and so what i would do instead is either completely remove the other question because it's not really needed or i would say would the end of this week uh, work for you or is the start of next week better right something like that where you're already assuming that they're gonna say yes right because you're already assuming your value uh, which is also a powerful thing to do so that is the first message now on to the second message this is a shorter message um now a, a lot of people ask me like is long form or short form better etc uh, etc et and there's really no right answer if you have a, a really good long form email copy then that's going to perform it's not really about the length it's kind of like ad copy like the length doesn't really matter if it's just if it's good it's good right uh, and it's going to get a response obviously understand that different platforms uh, require different messaging right so for example for instagram you're not going to send out this essay right whereas for email that is a bit more normal so without further ado let's get right into it now first line i don't quite like i'm not a, a big fan of uh, the first line because he he basically says that in the in the actual gap here uh, there's going to go a brand name and I personally don't recommend you guys reach out to brands uh, simply because if you reach out to a brand on Instagram the CEO or, or the founder is probably not going to handle the Instagram account and if they are it's probably not a good fit right because they're not a, a huge brand um, and uh, the person is not really delegating this this stuff and so if they're not delegating their social media management they're probably not going to invest into Facebook ads but again that is just me assuming right um, but th that's kind of the, the way I see it uh, so you want to make sure that you reach out to the founder or the CEO. If you guys are doing Instagram outreach, most likely the brand is following the founder or the CEO, right? So do a bit of, you know, Google search to find out who the, the founder is, then go on the following and then find the founder and then send the founder a DM. Also, because the founder probably doesn't get as many DMs as the brand if it's a big brand, okay? So that is the first thing. Love the brand and what you're doing. I would get much more personalized, right? I'm so sure they get so many DMs from people saying, hey, I love the brand and what you're doing, right? But what if the brand actually has like a, a, a really incredible mission, right? I'm not saying you guys like personalize everything, right? But just add a bit of, of, of spice, of, of flavor to it. And I'm not gonna go too hard on, on this message, but that is one of the things that I want you guys to keep in mind that, look, they are getting a lot of DMs, right? So talk about their mission. It's literally gonna take you like, 10 seconds to hop on their Instagram, probably look at their bio. Like there's probably a mission there or something that they stand for. And so love the fact that you are supporting the beast or something like that, right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that is what I would do. Love the brand and what you're doing is, is too general. So going on to the next paragraph, we know the world is going through tough times at the moment, but it's a great time to capitalize. I, I, I don't feel good about that. I, I just think it's, it's a bit desensitized, uh, to be honest. Um, I understand what you're saying, right? I understand that Look, you know, it's, it's actually a great time to grow a business online, but at the same time, and, and especially clothing brands, like, I mean, yes, a lot of them are doing great, right, online, but it's also niche that it's not like growing because of coronavirus a ton, right? Uh, because it's not kind of like, it's not beauty, health or wellness. So I would personally be much more sensitized to the fact that like, you know, people are actually really struggling, like people are losing lives. And so framing it in, in a way that it's, it's time to capitalize, I'm not, you know, I'm not a big fan of that, right? So. That's the second paragraph. The third paragraph is we here at Whatever Media I help clothing brands get more sales using Facebook ads by providing our clients with a steady flow of new prospects. This guy has watched my free masterclass. I'm sure of that because he clearly knows how to structure an agency mission. If you guys haven't watched the free masterclass, by the way, go ahead and check out the link in bio. Uh, just the insane feedback that I've been getting on it and people are actually implementing this stuff. So um, yeah, that, that is honestly a perfect mission. It's very clear what you do. What I would say though that I'm not a big fan of that mission is get more sales. That is very general, right? 
you're not being specific with get more sales. Every single e-commerce brand wants to get more sales, right? It, it doesn't really allow you to stand out. And so instead of get more sales, you could say double your sales or increase your sales by 10x or whatever you want to do, right? Um, you know, grow to six figures, whatever you want to do, but make it, make it specific. Because yes, all brands are trying to make more money, but what is the very specific outcome that you can help them achieve, right? Can you help them, you know, grow by 100x or can you help them double their bottom line? Uh, etc etc right so you want to get quite specific with that um and uh, the final thing he says is interested hope to hear from you soon uh, stay safe uh, kind regards um now the interested hope to hear from you soon you need to be way more specific there needs to be a much more clear call to action right what what do you actually want them to do like do, do you want them to dm you saying yes i'm interested uh if that's the case that's probably not going to happen because they get a lot of dms like this um do you want to be very specific what is your your offer what is the, the, the value that you're offering for example in the in the previous messages i like the fact that like he was quite specific right he said it's going to be a 20 minute call and he also said that he was going to troubleshoot their current situation right so the, you know the, the, the value is very clear of that call with this message you're not clear as to what the outcome you want out of this conversation is right like what is the call to action and if it's just that you know them dming you that they're interested that it's a weak call to action there's really not a great incentive for them to dm you uh, because you, you really haven't told them much about uh what you do yes you have the the agency mission but there needs to be a lot more juice in that so the final thing he says is stay safe uh, kind regards um I mean, you're signing out twice there. So I would say either stay safe and then your name or kind regards and then your name, right? By the way, I'm sorry if I'm roasting you, but you know, I, I want to be like completely straight up um, and, and upfront about this analysis. So guys, that is that for the cold messages analysis. Hope that was a value. If you found it a value, go ahead and drop a like. It will help sort of down with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. Also leave down below any comments, any questions uh, you may have on the analysis or anything SMMA related. Also, if you haven't subbed to my YouTube channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship and a 360 approach to SMMA with a specific focus on sales and outreach. And lastly, if I make another one of these and you wanna be featured in it and uh, you want me to take a look at your first cold message and give you feedback on it, go ahead and join the free private mentorship community, the client closers, and that way you'll be able to send me a DM with your cold message. And as always guys, hope everything's going well in your agency journey and I will speak to you in the next one, peace.